when you see that name on the brief, you say good. You know, and that doesn't mean I'm going to rule in, in their favor, of course, but at least I know this is going to be a pleasure to read. And the other thing, the citations are on the money, and that's a huge uh, advantage for any lawyer to have. Often, one that lawyers hope they are getting by putting the time and effort into the briefs that they should, but particularly when you are a frequent flyer in front of a particular court, uh, you know, if, if you have a reputation, for example, for knowing the rules of evidence and being expert in them, hey, you, you come in with a stronger hand. Is that fair? Probably not. But you are more likely to be viewed as trustworthy than the other guy. And that counts for an immense amount, not just in the courtroom, but uh, in your written advocacy, advocacy, too. The first time you read something that doesn't finish the sentence, uh, and you realize the, the excerpt you've been given is out of context and, and misleading, um, immediately there's a, a, a cloud of doubt that's cast over the rest of the brief. And um, so it, it's more, it's particularly like, to me like this, where, where less so than 20 years ago, with the influx of many lawyers from out of town, but still you know, there are some lawyers whose briefs I read, I know that they're going to be kind of slow going, and they're not going to be misleading, they're just not going to be complete. They're not going to be the kind of job that, that ought to get done. And there are others you read and you know you can take it to the bank. What they say is accurate, and uh, their citations, their research has been thorough. And uh, again, if they have somebody who hasn't done the same kind of job, they're more likely to win than when there's two of equivalent quality. It's, it's common sense.